Today is the first day of in-school teaching. Lily's at school. I'm celebrating. I'm on my stage at all. All right, so we are going to be talking about stencils and what to do with the stencils. This is kind of an additional video back two videos ago where I did the DIY stencils at home. This is for those that have stencils, that want to make stencils, that just want some inspiration on what to do with them. This video is for you. So I'm going to create a whole bunch of stuff and a whole bunch of mess, so let's get to it. All right, so this is the stencil I actually made in the last video in the DIY stencil video, which I will link right up here on the top right hand corner if you wanna check that out after you watch this video. And here are some other stencils that I created in the same exact way, different sizes, all creating them at home. You can also create your own stencils with die cuts. So if you don't have a cutting machine, uh, just go ahead and grab some of that stencil paper and cut it out with your dies and you can get you know, DIY stencils that way. So here is the actual stencil I made and cut in the last video. This is a buffalo plaid stencil. And I'm gonna do a little bit of swinking. And if you're unsure what swinking is, I am going to link a video right up here. I'm not linking it. I'm like click right there on the eye, on the top corner. I never know what to say right here. It's up here in the right hand corner. And if you click it, it'll take you to the swinking video. Just hold tight and watch it after you finish this video. Uh, so here I am just swinking on a couple of different colors of ink. All the supplies I use, as always, are listed below in the description for you. So once I have that on there, I'm going to take some water and just spritz it on there. That's regular water. You could also use some, like, Perfect Pearls water if you want to add some shine to it. It's totally up to you. But I am just spritzing the mess out of the stencil. I mean, that looks really, really ugly. But when I pull the stencil up, I am left with this beautiful background, which I'll show you in just a second. We're going to create something with it. Then I'm going to take the same stencil, flip it over, and press it onto another piece of cardstock, and then I will get a ghost print. And so it's a twofer. Twofer. Use up that ink that you have on your stencil. Another way is just to use whatever pastes you have. I'm going to use this Nouveau Glacier paste. It's very fun and sparkly, and it works great on dark colored cardstock. So I'm just going to basically blend that right through the stencil like I'm icing a cake. And I'm going to go in with two different colors. Again, the exact colors I'm using are linked below in the description for you. I'm just blending that on with a spatula. You can use a credit card. You can fold some cardstock and blend it that way. Whatever you've got will work. I like the spatula because it's bendable. And then when you peel it up, check it check it. It is just beautiful. And again, I'm going to do a twofer. I'm going to flip that stencil over and I'm just using a very dirty rag here just to press whatever paste is left on that stencil. And you'll be left with a beautiful ghost print. Here's a look at a card I made. I just stamped a couple of sentiments and an image right onto the, the print there. And it's just really pretty. That background is so nice and subtle and sparkly because of the paste I used. Now this is, we're going to do some foiling and this is a product from Thermoweb, it's a duo, if you will. So it's basically a, a type of paste. I'm just blending it through a part of my stencil, not the whole stencil, just doing a little bit of partial. Now this works with heat and without heat, which means you can use a laminator or you cannot use the laminator or not use a form of heat. So for the first one, I'm just going to put it in my laminator. I just folded it with some garbage. That's literally some map I took out of the, the garbage of what my son's school will look like. <laughs> and I am just putting in, I added some foil over the top and face up and I put it through the laminator and then I'm peeling it up. Sorry, I was off frame here. I was trying to hold the camera. And then I'm left with this beautiful look. But you can also use pressure. So without heat. So what you can do is either press the foil down maybe with a brayer or run it through your die cutting machine without any dies and use the pressure from the plates and you'll get a very similar look. So the one to the left is heat. The one to the right is just no heat. And you can see they're both very beautiful. Sometimes you can grab a Sharpie or any kind of permanent pen and just do a little bit of tracing. So I'm gonna trace a few of these little hexagons here from the stencil that I made at home with a Sharpie. And uh, yeah, you don't, you know, just, just think about all the designs that you have on your stencils and if you can pull any of them apart to create your own custom design. Then I'm just gonna do a little bit of smushing. I just smush, smush, smush. I smushed <laughs> some colors onto my glass mat I chose colors that would make a really pretty like indigo purple or something, I don't know. And I'm just gonna keep mushing and spraying and mushing and spraying until I get the look that I like. And then when I'm done, I created this card, right? I just added a couple of little pets peeking from the bottom going, hello, hello. 
And bada bang, bada boom, we're done here. <laughs> How cute are those pets? All right, let's do some Nuvo drops. Any kind of drops that you have, the Nuvo line is just, you've got embellishment, crystal, pearlescent. I'm using the Dream Drops. I like the Dream Drops because they're almost like they're holographic. They work great with black cardstock or dark cardstock. I just tore a post-it note in half to secure that stencil down because I didn't feel like looking for any kind of tape. <laughs> And that was there. And then I'm just squeezing out different kinds of these Nouveau Dream Drops. And then I grab some packets. This is what I store my stamps in, my little stamp pocket. I didn't feel like looking around for anything else. So I'm just blending it out with that. I'm just kind of swiping it down. And it's interesting because the colors will be different depending on what co base color cardstock you used. I did not use all green, so it was interesting to me that a bunch of green came out of those different colors. So I went in and found another color and, and kind of dropped that in. And then when you peel it up, let's do an instant replay of that, right? It's so pretty, sparkly, shiny against that dark cardstock. And here is a finished look at that. If my camera would have picked up that shine, I would have been so stinking happy. Let's talk about water. Now I have a whole video coming out in a few weeks that focuses on techniques you can use with just water. But today I just wanted to show you, I'm doing some direct inking straight to my cardstock. That is watercolor cardstock because I knew I was gonna do a lot of water. And I chose just two colors, I believe. Let's see, I, thank God I showed it. Orange peel and polished. Again, everything's linked below in the supply list for you. And then I'm gonna take that stencil, the buffalo plaid we made, and spray the bejeebies out of it. Then I'm gonna take the watered side of the stencil and press it down onto that cardstock. I have a video coming out in a couple of weeks that is all about water techniques, what you can do in your craft room with water, just plain old water. So be sure that you are subscribed or check back whatever floats your boat to see that video. So once I peeled up the stencil, it had a little bit of petal. Let's go back and look at that real quick. So as I peel it up, you can see the the design, but there's a lot of puddles there. So I just took a cloth and pressed it very gently to pull up all of that excess water, and then you could really see that background. And because we have some leftover ink on that stencil, I'm just gonna flip it over and press it down onto another piece of cardstock, and then I'll get a little ghost print. And here's a look at some cards I made with that. This one didn't need much, I just stamped a beautiful scenic stamp. Again, linked below in the description for you if you wanna check that out. Beautiful, and then this is a stamp that actually I created uh, based on a video that my daughter made when she kind of hijacked my channel and did some crafting, and I loved when she said, be amazingly amazing. So I actually took that and turned it into a stamp, found someone on Etsy that could do that for me, and it went perfectly with that subtle background. Another technique is brayered inking. So I'm taking a little brayer here and just pretty much picking up the ink and brayering it onto uh, through a stencil onto some regular cardstock. So I went in with a couple of different colors. I'm gonna use different parts of this stencil to incorporate the design. I'm not gonna use the exact stencil. You'll see what I mean. So here I, I've decided to go in with the darker color and I'm gonna focus on that little circle part of that stencil. And I'm just gonna move that all around the, the paper here. And when I'm done, I liked it. It was okay, uh, but I thought, eh. I need to do more, I need to do more Inter Nouveau Glimmer Paste. This is in the color Moonstone, it's clear. When you swipe that onto your cardstock and let it dry, you have created your, your own glitter paper. It is stunning. So I just went on with the media spatula here and I'm icing a cake. I'm just getting it on nice and smooth. I let it dry, probably took about an hour or so. And then you're left with a beautiful shimmery background that really made that background uh, from the Braired inking Super cool, I think. Man, if I could capture that on camera, the shine. All right, here's how I assemble my cards. I thought I would show this for you. There's my magic mug. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will link above to a video where I talk about my magic mug and I just dump everything out onto my work surface. Everything's there. And then as I go and create my card, I literally pick from that pile. And this is kind of how I assemble stuff. What looks good? What doesn't? What am I going to, what do I need? What am I missing? And it helps me create quickly and efficiently because I'm basically working off of everything that I have in that mug. This is kind of like an aftermath shot of, oh, good Lord, <laughs> what my desk looks like when I'm done crafting. Who's with me? Who's with me? Who's got a desk that looks like that? And here's a look at that finished card. Uh, this is the one with the Nouveau paste with the two different colors we did towards the beginning of the video. 
that's how fun and shiny and sparkly. I love that background and textured and, you know, the punny sentiment to go with the coffee cup. Got to do it. Lots of cards, lots of techniques. I hope you found some of them helpful. I've got a couple videos I'm going to throw up here that I think that you should take a look at. And do be sure to check back with me in the next couple of weeks because I'm going to have a video all about water. I mean, seriously, water. So as my daughter says, be amazingly amazing. And I'll see you next time.